Michael R. Hayes, and I'll be interviewing Robert Dwight Cornmesser, who uh, lives at uh, 673 West Squawbuck in Columbia City, Indiana. Uh, Bob was uh, in the Navy from uh, January 19, 1944 through June 4, 1946, and uh, serving in World War II in the Korea area. Uh, Bob, uh, were you drafted or did you uh, did you enlist? I enlisted in the Navy when I was approaching 18 years old. At the time, the time I had a choice of either enlisting, I could enlist in where I wanted to go, or if I wait till 18, I would go into the Army. And uh, I had no desire to go into the Army, so I, I just before I was 18, I was but 18 in February the 9th, I enlisted uh, in the Navy in January 19th. I was inducted in. Uh, I had graduated from high school. I graduated the previous June. I was probably one of the younger people in my class, I imagine. A lot of kids have uh, got drafted before they uh, finished their high school. So um, I chose to enlist, uh, partially I suppose because I had a brother that uh, preceded me. Uh, one thing, one reason why I suppose, again, they, I had no desire for the Army. Uh, I was sworn in the Navy in Des Moines, Iowa, and immediately we were transported by train to U.S. Naval Base in Farragut, Idaho. Uh, a lot of people have never even heard of it, but it was one of the largest uh, naval training bases at that time. Uh, and it, there is, it was closed up after the war, but uh, there is still a uh, naval base there in sorts. Uh, there is a Rather, this was just north of Cordon Lane, Idaho, and there was a, quite a deep lake there. And as I understand, they have uh, conducted submarine resource there now. So I spent six weeks there from January until sometime in March, uh, doing basic training. Uh, say there was many thousands of people there, and, uh, and I didn't realize right after the war was over that they had a lot of other technical schools there, and, uh, and a prison war camp there. So after six weeks uh, training, I was transferred to San Diego, and I went to 16 weeks of a uh, machine shop course. Interesting happened, thing happened while I was there. Uh, one day, in the middle of the day, they took us all out of class and took us up to the theater, so it was a movie. And I can't remember the name of the movie, but it was uh, somebody's submarine going into Tokyo Bay, and I believe Randolph Scott was the uh, lead actor in that. So, you know, hey, oh, glory. So, so they immediately after that, they came out there and sub uh, volunteered for submarine duty. At that time, you didn't get assigned to submarine duty, you, got, you volunteered for it. So I was sucker enough, and I signed up for it. Well, everybody else got sent out except for five of us. My group, we got held over, and but then before I got called for it, we had their uh, allotment filled, so I went on regular duty. So um, in um, December, I was received orders to go overseas. Uh, I was. 
just probably somewhere on 10th or 15th December of 1944. And uh, so we were put on a uh, on a ship headed for where I don't know. Uh, the name of it was a it was a CVE USS Long Island. It was a converted uh, aircraft. first stop was in uh, Pearl Harbor, we spent Christmas in Pearl Harbor, uh, then we pulled out and we went right by the uh, USS Arizona where the battleship, battleship roll was all sunk. Then we headed for, again, points unknown, which eventually was the South Pacific and we arrived in Manus Island, uh, which is north of New Guinea. Uh, sometime in January. I don't have a date in the head right now. I was again, I was, this is just a, a big uh, distribution uh, base, supply base. I was there for about six weeks, and then I was reassigned again. This was, uh, again, I was put on a troop transport, don't know where you're going, but you went, without any question. And this was a, uh, again, it was the USS Goodhue. It was an EPA. And, uh, so we went to, uh, in the Philippine Islands, we went to uh, Lady Gulf in the Philippines. This was after the, uh, it had been secured. The Battle of Leyte had been happening. I can't tell you now how much, uh, probably, uh, so this has been someplace around the uh, end of March, 1st of April, I suppose. And we again put on a land base there, and I think it was only there a few days. And they loaded a bunch of us in a, into an LCM, landing craft, to took us out of the bay. We had our sea bags and everything, and we started uh, sending people to different ships. And we came up this one ship, brushed the old bucket, riding high out of the water. And I thought, okay, I hope I don't get that. Sure enough, I got it. That was the USS Grandelay, which was a IX-136, that means it was unclassified. It wasn't, what it was was a, uh, in 1918, the ship was built by the British for the Italian Navy. And it was captured in New York, I guess, when the war broke out, the story goes anyway. And uh, so they captured it and then they put it in the service. We were a, uh, it was a tanker. We carried diesel fuel for the landing craft. We uh, fueled the LSCs, the LCMs, and all the landing craft. Uh, we didn't, we weren't a glorious fleet tanker like most of them. We normally sat in the, uh, in the harbor and uh, they would come to us for fuel. So I was in a little machine, a little, little machine shop board there, and I was in this machine shop. Uh, and uh, when we went to sea, I would uh, stand watches down the engine. Well, the interesting thing when I first went aboard, since uh, we were a tanker, you had a lot of oil, old or all of our tanks leaked 
would leak into our drinking water. So not everybody immediately got sick when they went on, but you get get accustomed to this oil in your water. And I was one of them. I got three or four days. I was I was a sick boy. And then we got used to it, and um, so um, we spent a lot of time in um, Subic Bay in the Philippines. And we went down to um, Mindanao after that got secure. It wasn't completely secure when we went in there. It was actually in a little bit early. Uh, two days, yeah, it was just a few days after we had been, been secure. We used to watch the, uh, the anti aircraft uh, landing strip on the, right on the beach. And we'd sit there and watch the uh, land the bombers come in and reload and go back up into the hills and drop their load and come back down. So that's really as close as any battle I, I came to. The ship was a, uh, again, with a flat bottom. Of the bottom of it was just flat as this floor. And, uh, Top speed was probably, uh, I recall, about maybe plank speed was probably around 13 uh, knots, and I thought we probably cruised at probably 10, 10 knots. Uh, so it was interesting. There were probably 150 people on the on that ship. So we stayed on, stayed on that until uh, after V V E day and after V G V J day. V J day was in August, I believe. Uh, sometime around probably in November, we got orders to come back to the, to the states. And we were coming back you know, to our speed of 10 knots an hour. And about a week out of Pearl Harbor, we burned out a boiler. Only had two boilers to start with. Burned out one of them, so we had a reduced speed of about five knots for, for about a week till we got into Pearl Harbor. Yes, yeah, so we went back. Uh, well, I think we spent, got back before Christmas, so we spent Christmas again in Pearl Harbor. Uh, we repaired our boiler, that, you know, patched us up and sent us on back, so we went back to, uh, down through the canal, Panama Canal, and came back up to Mobile, Alabama. We got into Mobile, Alabama, probably I think in February, probably. Now, interesting thing, uh, we got in there. So we had so we'd been in South Pacific, we had a little heat on the ship. Our concern was keeping cool, and we had places uh, like on top of the boilers that uh, it was just so hot you almost take your breath away. But we didn't have place no heat in our sleeping quarters or anything, so people wound up sleeping in these areas just to keep warm. But you know, we didn't have all of our clothing, uh, warm clothing had been sent back home. So we had nothing to keep warm with. And uh, we got there and it seemed like it was the coldest day of the year, sometime in February. And uh, March, probably someplace in March, they towed us up the Mobile River and decommissioned the ship. We got off of it. And uh, then we came home, I 
came home for 30 day leave and uh, sent back to uh, Great Lakes Naval Base in Chicago and uh, just waiting discharge then. And finally in June I was sent to Minneapolis and June the 4th, 1946 I was discharged. I stayed in the naval, inactive Naval Reserve. Uh, not really sure why now, I, why I did it. Uh, so, uh, in the, the Korean War came along in 1950, they were calling in the inactive reserve rather than before the active. And I got called back in in November of 1950, and I was uh, then assigned uh, immediately to a uh, ship, USS Sierra, which was in Norfolk, Virginia at that time. USS Sierra was a uh, destroyer repair ship. We had full repair capabilities on there and repair most anything. And I was had a huge machine shop on there again, I was assigned to the machine shop. And uh, we went, let's see, that was a bit in November. We stayed in North Fork, just tied up there, the harbor, till um, May or June. And then we went to the uh, Mediterranean. We were assigned to the 7th uh, Fleet. I don't remember 7th Fleet now. Anyway, we were assigned duty in the Mediterranean Ocean, which was almost a uh, luxury cruise, really, during everybody else in the fight. No more. I tell people I had the Battle of French Riviera when uh, well, they were in Korea. But we went to uh, such places. We were in the French Riviera. We went to Rome. We went to uh, Naples. Uh, we were in, down to Malta. Uh, so we, I saw quite a bit of the Mediterranean. Then come back. This, I suppose someplace around the first of the year, around January, been January '52, we got came back. We were gone about six months, and then I we stayed out there until in March. I had enough points, and I got got discharged again. So that's a quick summary of that. My military life. Yeah. And what did you, where did you return to after the service? I went back home. My parents lived in Waterloo, Iowa. That's where, that's where they lived when I was uh, initially uh, went in. My father was an employee of John Deere Tractor Company. In fact, well, before I, I, I had worked at John Deere Tractor Company for several years myself prior to getting called back into the Korean War. So, so I had a job there when I went back. And, uh, so I should have been better prepared, got some dates prepared. Got back in March and October uh, Probably a year later, a year and a half later, I believe it had been in December of 1952, I get shot if I get my dates wrong, 
I was introduced to my wife. And uh, that was in December, and the next October we were married. So uh, and then after that, probably the next, yeah, okay, around June of the next year, I started back to college. Went to Iowa State University for studying mechanical engineering. When did you uh, arrive in Columbia City? I arrived in Columbia City in 1968. I was hired in as the supervisor of tool engineering at uh, what was then the Weatherhead Company. Worked there for five years and Opportunity came along and I bought a little machine shop and went business myself. And, uh, that lasted for five years till the uh, recession of 19, 1974, I believe I left there. 1980, the recession came along and I just couldn't stand it anymore. Thank you very much. Thank you.